All right, world. Welcome to the Spin the Wheel podcast with me, the Eddie Johnson bit. We're back for another week and another chat. How's your week been? Is everyone good? Yeah, we're all looking after ourselves. It's nice now that things are starting to ease up a little bit, isn't it? Uh, and we're not just talking in terms of lockdown. We're talking in terms of weather as well, aren't we? Let's be honest. It's nice when the evenings get that little bit lighter and the prospect of barbecues uh, opens itself up that little bit more. Anyway, enough chat about that nonsense. What have we got in store for you this week? Well, it's another chat with me and me wheel. There he is, Spinny. I mean, that might be his name. I haven't decided yet. So there's a bunch of random questions on that wheel. I'll give it a spin and we'll find out exactly where it's going to take the conversation with me and my guest. And my guest today uh, is a bit of a stand-up stalwart. Um, Paul Savage has been on the circuit for quite some time uh, and he's a professional comedian who goes around and does gigs, obviously not within the last year. Last year's been a bit tricky for stand-ups, trust me. Um, so he's also got loads of other stuff that he does. He does cartoons and... and uh, and that kind of thing as well. So yeah, he's a he's a he's a good guy. He's a really good chat, um, and uh, we might find out a little bit more about his boat. So are we ready for this? Right, Paul Savage. Let's get ready and spin the wheel. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Spin the Wheel, and welcome to you, Paul Savage. How are you doing, man? Hello. How are you all right? I'm very I'm very good. You're looking you. very relaxed. Very, very calm. Yes, I'm ly- lying on a bed. It is the quietest part of the flight. It's nice. Also- it's nice to see the whole spin the wheel thing. It's not stressing you out too much. Yeah, this is. Uh, I'm taking time off my busy schedule. <laughs> right. So a few basics then. So um, full time stand up comedian, uh, co- comic artist, are- author, yes. all of these kind of things. Yep. How would you describe yourself? Well, at the moment, I am a retired comedian, um, forcibly retired. And then uh, I'm mostly making my money at the moment from doing cartoons and created a book. Um, nice. And then did a Kickstarter for that and got it out just before Christmas. It's not self-publishing because it went through um, my friend's published company. But he is literally, he publishes it. He doesn't, he just gives you literally a crate of books and goes... Go on, and you're like, great. And he's like, he's like, do you want some for your website? And he was like, yeah, I'll have ten because that is <laughs> how many will sell through through my website over the lifetime. So it's literally it shoestring publication. It's just put out yeah. through you and your mate. Yeah, it's um, it's a thing I did for a couple of years. I did um, books that I take to the Edinburgh Festival, and I would give away a comic book at the end of it. And there's loads of people who have sort of seen the show, grabbed it, and then like message me two years later to go nice. this has been in my toilet uh, <laughs> uh, in the in the in the room that is the holds the toilets right this has been in my bathroom and got around to flicking through it the other day and i loved it and you're like oh great that's really nice so you're based in london but not originally from london no no where do you call home born in, uh, so it's weird now because the place that i would call home my parents have sold okay um so you know my childhood home was in Wolverhampton, grew up there but uh, yeah, so now uh, home is a boat that I live on a, in London. Wow. Uh, yeah, I live on a canal boat um, that I am doing up. Uh, currently not living on it at the moment because the engine broke just before Christmas and a new engine is coming. But basically it broke a week before, like three days before lockdown. And so I went back to my parents and then I'm now um, a flat sitting for my brother because I'm, I'm in his uh, flat in London so I can go across to the boat and fix things up. You are essentially, obviously, COVID uh, spoilt, um, but a comedian full time. Since when? What did you do beforehand? Uh, so I was in, I worked in sales for a bit and worked in um, recruitment consultants and stuff like that. Uh, what I didn't realize it was at the time that I had ADHD, which oh, means wow. that I was very bad at, very bad at office jobs. Ah, okay. um, and so I would get regularly asked to find different jobs elsewhere. Um, so I got fired from quite a lot. Then I started doing youth work, but it takes like a year to do the training course yeah. uh, and having to do loads of voluntary hours for that. So I spent a year applying for loads of jobs. This was just when the current government had got in and so they'd basically made all of the uh, loads of councils that cut costs. Yeah. And the first thing to go were youth workers. Mm. So I did like 160 application forms that year. 
and had two interviews. And so I was still doing gigs around. Really depressing um, time as well, trying to apply for... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, so I did all that. And then I was off to the fringe to do uh, the first ever year I was doing there. And I was getting paid to do flowering for uh, Paul Sinner. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And so I was like, right, I've got a short term. I went to the job center. I was like, I've got a short term job. But it will only last three weeks. It cannot last any longer. And they were like, oh, yeah, cool. But also, um, if you go self-employed, the government will give you money to smooth out the thing. Right. Uh, I think it was like £55 a week. And I was getting 60 on the dole. And so I was like, for a tenner to not have to go into the job centre once every other Tuesday. Yeah, I'll do that. Fair so enough. that's when I went self-employed and just sort of like have scrambled around for the last decade to being like, okay, I've got enough coming in from this and this and this and this and spinning plates. A, and a going, friend, yep, of, a friend of mine called that um, having a, a portfolio career. The, uh, the portfolio career because you're just I like so terrified of getting a real job they got seven instead yeah. <laughs> yeah completely i really don't want to work in an office nine to five so instead i'll i'll work umpteen jobs working from about seven yep. till ten in the evening yeah, don't worry yeah. it hasn't has quite it, balanced out has it just constantly like ideas that you have where you're like is this a sensible use of my time or is this a weird little get rich quick scheme yep i know exactly exactly what you mean Welcome to the yeah. Spin the Wheel podcast. Anyway, on that yeah. one, <laughs> Question number 23. Where have you been in the world that you would most want to go back to? I would really like to go back to the Galapagos Islands. Oh, wow. Uh, which I went to when I had a little um, breakdown slash gap year. Uh, when I, in a, what, 20, 2015. Let's go gap year. Like, Let's go gap year. Basically, I was um, I was doing cartoons and comics mm. and gin and being a stand up, and all of them were bad. Uh, <laughs> and so it was like, oh, I've turned all my hobbies into jobs. They're all making me sad. And then um, someone drove into my car, completely wrote it off, and the insurance company were like, "Here's a check for four grand." And I was like, "Oh, so went to South <laughs> America." And wow. uh, yeah, did the Galapagos uh, as part of that, which was really cool. Like they're just incredibly pretty. So and not somewhere I think I've ever really even. I thought it was in a different place to where it is. Oh, really? Uh, for years, yeah, for years I thought it was off the coast of Australia, which it's not. It's off the coast of Ecuador. It's, okay. Um, top, top of South America. Not even the right um, continent then. No, no. <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, it's pretty and blue, and that looks. So, like, you can go snorkeling. There's coral reefs. Ah, that's probably Australia. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there was a bit. There's a little beach. Um, La Lapidera, I think, is the means of the nursery. And it's where... So, it's like a horseshoe bay little beach on the sea. Yeah. Um, and it's where the, the seals, where they grow up, basically, because it's protected. Oh, wow. And, basically, there's times of the day where you can just go in and swim. Wow. And the seals will swim around you. But it was really funny because uh, someone was like, oh, yeah, they're basically the ones that are being got from really playful with you are the uh, the adolescent females. So they're basically the teenage girls. <laughs> oh, just, you're, you're sticking your head underwater and spinning around and they're like spinning around with you. And then there's like big daddy seal comes over and just like, sir, my intentions towards your lovely daughter are purely honourable. I, do, I, I must stress that. Yeah, it's a matter of it was magic, and it was really like obviously the flights out there were reasonably expensive, but once you were there, it was quite cheap. And you know, sort of like this is so cool that I managed to do this. How long were you uh, there? How long were you there for? Uh, three, four days. It wasn't a long time, oh, okay. Be, 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 because it, um, and because of that, I'd like to you know go longer. There's some amazing but, places that I've been to that I would love to go back to, but so many more places I think that I've yet to discover or yet to find out about. Um, yeah, my like my list is ridiculous when people are like, because I did the Australian fringes last year. Oh, did you? And I want to go across. Yeah, I did um, Adelaide and Melbourne. And I want to go back and do them again. But I also want to do the New Zealand ones as well. Yeah. And like some of the smaller ones that are around about. And so you can just pop in, do one show, see the sights, get the uh, get the fun of it. And then just be like, bye, jumping on a plane, go to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. So you can just do like five months of just... Nice. Uh, dicking about the fringe, which is what I would love to do. How did you find when you went over to Australia? How did your um, show, your stuff, how did it go down over there? Uh, it went uh, really well, actually. It was a, it was a really good time of it. Um, Adelaide was a little difficult just because it's not as big a town as right. uh, Melbourne and the festival's not quite as 
um, established, but it was really, really good. And then Melbourne, that was great. Like I had to put on extra shows. Nice. Because in the first week of doing it, you're getting reviewed and then that helps. So by the time I had, by the time I came to Melbourne, I already had five reviews from uh, publications in Adelaide, which was really great. So you can stick those on the thing and just go, look. People like me. (laughs) Yeah, the... uh, Adelaide advertisers say that I'm good. Yeah. People uh, in your country so, have actually heard my things, and they think that uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like a website you've never heard of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's trying to get some kind of quote from someone that they might be able to relate to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's the kind of thing I'd love to do. I think I'd probably be a little bit scared of being able to translate across. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know how English yeah, style humour goes there, but. Well, I mean, it's very interesting because a lot of them, uh, there's a huge English demographic anyway with the... The, the whole Disney expat community and all the... the yeah, all expat, the, 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 yeah, and so, but because of that, they had things where like... So Monty Python was obviously huge there. Yes. But um, I think the goodies, they showed at like 6 p.m. Oh, wow. Every weekday during the 80s. And like Benny Hill, I think, was huge out there. <laughs> it's amazing so how he translates just, across the world. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So they're just like, oh, yeah, English. And so like, the English humour goes down pretty well. Yeah, cool. Australian comedy is very interesting because there's some great stuff and then the, the, the mainstream and the alternative are quite separate. Okay. Um, I really liked you just because you weren't doing differences between two rival towns of like... <laughs> Like, I mean, some of it's little things of just going, okay, learn what the exchange rate is yeah. so that when you say this in your, in your joke, uh, okay. it doesn't make Then it any... relates to, yeah, gotcha. I mean, because I was doing one that, um, I was doing my show, it's called um, All the Jokes in the Bible. So I took that one over cause just because it's the easiest one to sell. Yeah. But like one of the really early jokes in it, sort of early on in the show is, Adam and Eve are kicked out of the Garden of Eden for stealing an apple, um, which is like quite a harsh pun- uh, harsh punishment for scrumping. Yeah. And then it uh, doesn't work in Australia because no. they don't have the concept of scrumping. They like it when you've done a bit of research. Yeah, and put something in specifically just, for them. Yeah. It's that classic stand-up thing of you go to a town and it's like, right, where's my local rival? Uh, who's the local yeah. football team that they don't like very much? Who, who's yeah. the local newsreader who's been in the... in the? And you just find out there's a few bits and pieces. I'll just replace those ones because that's going to get me a bigger laugh. Da, da, da. Yeah. Jobs are good then. Number 14. Number 14 says, tell me about your favourite birthday. My birthday is in uh, late January. Right. Uh, It's always been a weird one of going, yes, my birthday is the point where everyone's doing dry January. (laughs) Is it it your birthday that happens to be, are you like around Blue Monday, that kind of time, like four weeks after Christmas where everyone's just really dipped down? Yeah, and you're like, oh, she wants to. So quite often my birthday is like, we're not doing anything big. Who wants to go to the pub? Uh, <laughs> nice. And that, that's it. There's some good ones when I was a kid where you're like, we're going swimming and having a McDonald's afterwards. And you're like, yeah, nice. that's a great birthday. That's a great um, party, that one. Always is. We we did that a few years ago for my friend. It was her birthday. It was over the summer. And we did it as a 10-year-old's birthday party. Nice. I really rate so that. We, uh, so we were like, right, we're going to go into the, the uh, communal area of your little uh, where all of our bo- blocks of flats are, yeah, and we're going to uh, play French cricket. Nice. And uh, then we had um, turkey dinosaurs and like day glow things. Awesome. And you're like, uh, yeah, like have a little party bag. Um, so yeah, I think that is is a thing that I think I want. I really rate that. I don't mind going out of drinking, and I don't mind going to clubs. Yeah, but ah, I'm probably a bit too old for that. Whereas if you were like, cool, we've hired out a village hall. And we're having a ten-year-old birthday yeah. party. Uh, we've we've hired the local so, sports centre. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've got all the inflatables we're just, out. We're go- That'd be amazing. Yeah, and we're going to do we're going to do skids on our knees <laughs> on the uh, <laughs> on the parquet floor. Brilliant. So I think yeah, yeah, I think that might be my next one. Yeah, I think I might plan that. That sounds a great um, great idea. Stick one of the leisure yeah. tenants in the corner with a disco. Go on, crack up. <laughs> no, I, think be I cool. mean, if you don't do it, then I'm having that idea. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that concept. Like, uh, let's normalise it. Absolutely. Like it. Absolutely. Nice one. Right, let's spin again. 
If you had an evening at home on your own with no calls, socials or chats to disturb you, what would be your go-to film or TV programme? I would probably like to watch. Um, I mean, one of the things that I can watch over and over again is the um, classic Simpsons, you know, series like three to eight, where there's just so many like layered jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just as a kid, you watch it and you're like, ah, the fat man got hit in the head with a hammer. And then you're like, when you learn some stuff and you're like, oh, wow, the fat man did get hit in the head with a hammer. And that is funny. But also they're doing jokes about 1960s politicians. Yeah, at the same, that, at the like, same time. At yeah. the same time, they're done, like they're throwing little background jokes in. And like the thing is when I watch a t- um, an old TV series or a film that was done before 1980, yeah. if you watch a classic film and you're like, oh, uh, that's what that joke was about in The yeah. Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just so many. And so, yeah, uh, probably I have a lovely little binge of The Simpsons. Nice. Um, and, you, you know, uh, um, you know Frizz Frizzle, don't you? Frizz is, um, I do. Frizz yeah. is a, a massive Simpsons nerd, uh, and he's yeah, he's he, one of those people who uh, tested each other on quiz questions. I can imagine you probably have. Yeah, I only really yeah. realised it, but from um, from following his Twitter and stuff, and it's like, oh, you 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 really know this program? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, we were on um, James Cook's game show in um, Edinburgh. It's called Board Game Smackdown. Oh, okay. And at one point, like, I did a reference to a Simpsons joke, and then he got it, and then uh, he was just like, that is from uh, episode. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then, like, for, so for, I think, for, for, like, the next three minutes, we stopped playing the game show, and then me and the other three contestants were just naming bits from classic <laughs> Simpsons, and he could tell you which episode they were in. No, not keen on that one. Uh, let's go with number 10. When did you realise that this, let's go comedy, uh, was going to be your kind of your pathway uh, and the thing that you were going to do? It was an interesting one because it was like, I started doing it when I was working in a, like a terrible job. Uh, but you used to have to get up at like half seven and mm. go to Kidderminster for every day, uh, drill steel in a factory. But it wasn't very creatively fulfilling. And I started doing a couple of gigs and I'd done two or three. And then there was a one where they were like, we need you in the factory tomorrow at six because we've got a big shipment. Yeah. And we need all hands on deck. And then I had a gig the night before in Leicester. And it was my like second time, second or third time doing a gong show. Right. And I did <clears throat> quite well. Like, uh, didn't win, didn't make any money from it, yeah. but just like, I beat the time and was like, cool, that's it. I don't need my job anymore. No I'm way. And just like, didn't go in the next day because I was like, and then they were like, yeah, that's not, <laughs> you're like, yeah, but I'm going to be a superstar because I w- was quite good at comedy yesterday. Wow. Uh, I didn't say any of that to them, but like, it was just like, <laughs> this was all going on in my head. Yeah, exactly. Got in at like two in the morning back from the gig and was like, there's no way I'm getting up at six, which um, deeply upset my parents at the time uh, because you're going from, you know, not a particularly fun industry, but like one that was at least stable work yeah. and go in, yeah, I'm going to do something different. And then obviously within about oh, uh, probably a few weeks, we're like, okay, I've got to get a job again. <laughs> um, so yeah, ended up doing um, lots of weird what got you on, stuff. What got you on stage week. in the first place? Um, I've just always really liked it. I've um, been a fan of um, like comedy growing up. The stuff that I tended to go for Oh, if you go into the library as a kid, uh, and there's books about this and there's books about that, yeah. but there's an asterisk, and asterisk is funny, and it's got loads of little lovely hidden jokes in there, and you go, oh, great, yeah, cool, I'll go for that. And um, the like, we were had pretty set bedtimes, but if I was watching something that was comedy, I might be allowed to stay up for that. All right. So, you know, like, oh, you're watching Blackadder with your dad and you're yeah. like, oh, going to get sent to bed here at any point. And you're like, oh, no, he seems to have completely forgotten <laughs> that I've got a bed bedtime because he's engrossed in Blackadder and we're enjoying it along. Completely. That's sort of quite nice. Some of the wordplay stuff of finding out that you can break apart these little jokes and, like, there's a thing, it's one of the weirdly more popular jokes that I ever did on Twitter, but it was one I wrote in the playground when I was a kid, which was uh, Michael Stipe uh, going, that's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight, losing my religion. 
that's me with a lovely couple from Strood, uh, just in going through his holiday pics. Just <laughs> well, I did it this year as a cartoon. So like, we just and then loads of people, are like, oh yeah, that's brilliant. And you go, that, that's a joke that I was mucking about with when I was fifteen. And that, the cool thing about comedy is you can learn tr- tricks and tips and start putting together ideas of that. Okay, that works, and that's a, a thing. Also, I find it tremendously useful as a dump valve for my brain okay. of just going, oh, yeah, you've got a load of garbage thoughts in here. Walking out on stage and just going, I feel like this, and it's mental, and you get a big laugh of recognition, and you go, oh, we're all mental. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, good. Okay, good. Uh, number four, uh, what's your favourite roast? Uh, my favourite roast is at the moment a uh, roast lamb. Really, like it can be really tender meat, but also like really juicy and like you get a lot of the crisp. If the fat crisps up really nicely, uh, you get like a nice texture change and. Also, it doesn't feel as difficult as some of the other ones. It's quite... See, I love this like, question on the grounds of you can ask it and some people get completely surprised by it and uh, they kind of say, oh, uh, I don't know. And then you ask it to some other people and like yourself, they, they, know. they go in. Okay, yeah, this is an yeah. important kind of thing that we're dealing with here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, um, I'm i a big fan of food anyway. Like, I've had points where I'm like, should I retrain to be a chef because I like cooking and then you realise that's not what they do they're not just cooking <laughs> one lovely dinner every day it's a lot more difficult than that yeah. and it's a lot it's quite stressful and it's not that fun yeah like, okay yeah so uh, but yeah I, I do like a, a good roast um, and then if you roast all of the veg around it yes. it's great um, yeah stuff like roast garlic in there as well um, just like fully roast the whole head of garlic the whole rosemary um, the whole shebang yeah, yeah, and my mum's got a recipe that I believe came from um, one of those weird 70s cookbooks. Nice. But you basically do it on a bed of uh, chopped carrots and apricots, celery and stuff, and that all just roasts down into like a really nice, gooey, slightly sweet sauce that you have with it, but it's really tasty. Okay, I'm getting, yeah. getting a little bit hungry now. That sounds like a very, very good idea. Yeah, it was a really bad choice to do this at uh, five past five because yeah. that's the uh, tea time. You've got to set set aside some time for a row, seven years. Yeah, yeah. I got really angry this uh, about two weeks ago because I'd seen a recipe for nigella for bitter orange tarts, and then I went. It was like I don't have all the bits, but okay, I'll go out and get the bits, and then I, like forgot some of the bits. I was like, oh, okay, I've got right. I'm doing this now, and then fifteen minute prep, thirty minute cook time. As I was doing, it, it was like you now you've finished your base put that in the fridge for two hours to set and i was like well that means i'm making a lemon curd uh, an orange curd like a lemon curd but with oranges at 10 past 10 <laughs> at night <laughs> oh, that's not exactly what i want i saw do. you tweet I about this I scrolled further down the, the thing and it was like all right now you've made your lemon curd put that in the fridge to set for two hours so that was midnight and then leave overnight to set and i was like well good job I'm no, I, d- I saw your tweet the about this i completely the agree. The crap time. if people yeah. if people are writing recipes that require <laughs> you to put things aside for a set amount of time that's included in the cooking or preparation time thank you it has yes. to be thank you I quite one or the other isn't it but yeah it was actually really nice in the end oh, um, <laughs> i'm, I'm yes. glad it all turned out all right for you okay great come on last time Let's see what the wheel's got number five it says what music gets you going in the morning uh, I am a not a morning person. Okay. Um, well, we can, so, we can take the morning uh, out of the, we can put that in brackets. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's, yeah, it's what, what gets me going when I'm like, when uh, you need to, to get yeah, up. Yeah. It's not a thing I really do. I mean, there is, there are uh, songs that like, where you're like, yes, motivating. <laughs> System of a Down's quite good for that. Oh, really? Uh, Cause it's just lots, it's lots of crunchy guitars and like, sort of like, ah, noises. And okay. Like, at the drive-in, uh, I've got ah, something yes. called uh, One Arm Scissor with the, just and it's got like just lovely just big ah, drums remember on it. it well uh, and that's very good very good for just right come on then get up um it was very interesting of uh when i was taking care of my niece and nephew we had songs that they would ask for every day <laughs> to uh go for nursery rounds and they're like ah these are the nursery rounds yeah. oh, these are rubbish and so one of them was gogol bordello's uh start wearing purple nice which if you've never played to a two and a four year old 
highly recommend <laughs> they love it <laughs> brilliant they, they're just like it's in my oh, okay yeah uh, and there's another one called not a crime which is just like in the old time in the old time in the old time it was not the, not the crime. <laughs> yeah, the, they're bonkers the, right the, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, and they are absolutely brilliant making perfect kids music yeah in the same way that the beatles made a lot of great kids music and uh, Franz Ferdinand. I can just imagine a four year old just going, just This is great. Ah, la, 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 la. La. Yeah, going all over the place. Yeah. Madness, I imagine, did. Like, I've never tried that with the. Uh, with the niece and the nephew, but like I can imagine that would be. I a, can imagine they go down. The um, well, yeah, yeah. My sister's taking it for Friday. We all finish work and have a little kitchen disco. Nice. Or we'll slam some tunes on YouTube onto the, and we'll just have a little dance to a get you slightly more worn out than you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which is a, a good, useful thing, but also yeah, like let's it's the equivalent of kicking off your shoes and having a beer, but you're not allowed. So yeah, well, you're not allowed just until they until they they've done bedtime. So <laughs> yeah, but let's have a little. A little celebration before the end of the work week. It's quite nice. Nice. Okay, so we've come to the end. We've had our spins. Oh, so times. How was spin the wheel for you? It was very fun, mate. Thank you very much indeed for having me on. And before you go, a uh, couple of things. Um, number one, have you got anything to promote or plug? And secondly, oh, you best and secondly, <laughs> how can people uh, get in touch with you? How can they find out about what you're up to? Uh, you can find out on me on uh, Twitter. I am at Comedy Savage on Twitter. I'm uh, Savage Comics underscore on Instagram. That whole thing about not getting there five years early. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they've got a rubbish username on there. I uh, have a website called savagecomic.com uh, that's got loads of my comics on there. And from there, you can buy my book, which is oh, cool. called But Doctor. I am a collection of strips by uh, comic strips by Paul Savage. And uh, it's really good fun. It's nice. a really lovely book. And it's only a tenner. And if you pay me like a couple of quid extra, uh, I will uh, draw uh, a bespoke doodle in the front. Well, if you're watching on YouTube, so, I'll put all the uh, links and stuff up, up, so up there, I believe. Up so, that, somewhere up there. Uh, a little bit. Uh, great. Um, so, yeah, hopefully. I didn't realise that this was YouTube, uh, so I would have had a much more flattering angle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the beauty. Uh, like you can see me now without the chins. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear me. Check out Paul's book um, and uh, buy, 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 buy several copies. You can find some of his stuff on YouTube as well. Although be careful when you search for Paul Savage on YouTube. I had a quick look on YouTube. Did you know there's a, a guy called Paul J. Savage on YouTube? No. Uh, he's a business YouTuber. He has like... 300,000 uh, viewers. Uh, so if you stick a J in the middle of any of your videos, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So yeah. just st- steal, steal some of his work. Check out Comedy Savage and um, paulsavagecomedy.com and all the rest of that stuff. Sir, it's been an absolute pleasure having a chat with you. Uh, Lovely I'm to see you, mate. Really, well, really pleased that we've been able to have a natter. He's, he's hoping we see each other actually in person on a stage before too long. Lovely to see you, mate. Thanks Cheers. for spinning Bye. the wheel. Cheers now. Bye-bye. And that was Paul Savage and Paul Savage's spin the wheel experience. Um, I do apologize for Paul for him not realizing the fact that it was being videoed until about three quarters of the way through. Uh, however, <laughs> however, um, he's a lovely bloke um, with loads of experiences uh, and lots of time spent on the road to various gigs and in his particular case on the water uh, as well. Um, I'm really glad I had a chance to catch up with him and have a natter. A uh, really good guy. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed that chat. Because um, that's all it is. It's just me chatting to some people, hoping to entertain you with their stories and mine. That's how I should probably sum up the spin the wheel experience, really, isn't it? To anybody who's remotely interested. If you're wanting to pass this on, you can maybe tell them that instead um yeah that's the most important thing if you like this and you've enjoyed it then tell some friends see if we can get them to listen or watch as well so it's on youtube obviously uh and on spotify and itunes and you find can find me on twitter as well at spin the wheel pod um you can ask me any questions there or indeed just let me know what you thought of it uh that would be lovely feedback is always welcome um i'll be back next week and hopefully i might see some of you then so yes have a good week look after yourselves look after each other and uh i'll see you back here for spin the wheel next friday cheers now ta-da